Hello, good morning. <laughs> my name is Tessa. Welcome to my channel. Um, yeah, so collective tarot reading for Monday, February 7th, 2022. Um, I'm excited about doing this. Lately, I, I, I kind of like look forward to these Monday readings because that's pretty much all I got going on right now on my channel is just these Monday readings and then like little videos here and there. It's just because I have so many different things that I have my hands in right now. Um, but over time, if you're watching this for the first time, over time, I definitely plan on like doing more videos. So we'll see. Everything is just kind of like in this gradual, experimental, I don't know, kind of phase. Okay. Um, but I look forward to these like little Monday mornings because it kind of like gets my week going. Um, and it gets me kind of like going into like being in my office room on my desk and, you know, doing the things that I need to be doing for myself. So... Um, aside from that, like, I don't even know what, you know, like, I don't really have any, like, formal updates or, like, anything to really, like, give you. Like, I'm still, the NFT thing is still, um, something that I'm working on. Um, I've been doing a lot of astrology charts lately, so if you're interested in getting your personal chart, just send me an email. Send me, don't even worry about like money or anything like that. Just send me an email if you're interested in getting your chart done. Um, I've actually been doing a, a lot of like free charts and stuff for friends. Um, yeah, so we, we will figure it out. You know, maybe you can, you can write me like a review or something like that, but, um, yeah, I've, I've been doing um, my astrology charts and just kind of putting that together. Um, I have so I have so many plans like I would love to do um, tarot readings like for events and stuff like that for like people's parties or private parties or something like that. So I don't know like I have so many different things that I'm working on like NFT project, um, some crypto stuff. Um, oh my goodness, what else? <laughs> I don't even know. I've also been thinking, I've also been itching for a tattoo lately. I've been thinking very, very seriously about getting another tattoo. Like I always wanted to have like arm tattoos. I never wanted a sleeve. I'm not into the sleeve. I'm not into having every inch of my skin covered, but I do like the contrast of like having kind of random tattoos and then the skin showing through that. I think like the colors and the contrast is really, really cool and pretty. Um, I don't think I would get tattoos anywhere else on my body. I already have two on my back. Um, but I think I would leave the rest of my body just kind of like, you know, I think I would just kind of like do my arms. But yeah, I've, so, <laughs> so actually the tattoo that I had been wanting to get, um, is this, um, um, is this Serbian word. Okay. So it's Inat, I-N-A-T. It's, it's, it's a word. You can't really translate it that well into English, but if you were to translate it straight up, um, it would, it would be something similar to spite, S-P-I-T-E. Um, but Inat, like culturally and in the Serbian call, it's, 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 it's a hundred percent a Serbian thing. Okay. And Inat is this just like, it's this very passionate, just kind of like, Enot, the energy of Enot is literally what got Serbian people out of some crazy shit. Like, that is what allowed them to fight revolutions, to fight for their freedom. Um, It's just this energy of just like, of like, I guess, hate for your, uh, for the people who are trying to control you. And that energy is so powerful that it little, it literally drives you into, um, like the rebellion and revolution. Okay. It's like, it's like this, uh, it's an energy of spite. It's an, it's an energy that drives you to, you know, free yourself of like, you know, um, things now, uh, free yourself of like, power structures and stuff like that. So I wanted to get um, the power of Enot tattooed on me. And then I was like, well, I don't know if I want like just words or if I want to like add something to it. So then I started thinking of like the Looney Tunes character, Marvin the Martian, because I wanted Marvin the Martian to be my first tattoo. Like literally when I was like 15, 16 years old, I'm like, Marvin the Martian is going to be my first tattoo. Like I just always thought he was so cool. And I was like, I started getting into like alien shit and outer space, like, you know, at an earlier age. 
Um, and I just thought he was so cool. And I just feel like he is like the perfect expression of Enot. Like, so if any of you have ever, have ever seen like the Looney Tunes show Marvin the Martian, like he just has that <laughs> anger to like blow up Earth, right? And to explode Earth. So I wanted to like, so then I was like, oh my god, maybe like that would actually be really cool if I got like an angry Marvin the Martian. And then it says like the power of Enot. Um... So yeah, that's been my idea for the tattoo. And I kind of like, I kind of like um, put it together on one of my like Photoshop apps or whatever and started to kind of play with it. And I'm, I'm kind of liking where it's going. I'm liking where it's going. So we'll see. But that's definitely something that I think that I might be doing. Um, that's personal stuff I, in, in case anybody cares to hear it. But um yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, I've been very politically active on, on Facebook lately. Usually Facebook is like, I don't know, I go through these weird periods with Facebook. Like I'll literally disappear from Facebook for like two years and then <laughs> and then I just like pop back up randomly, like th fucking throw in just like, just like, literally just like attacking everything you know attacking like politics and stuff like that like I'll literally just show up out of nowhere and then I'm posting one after another after another and I feel like people are just like where the fuck did that come from but yeah I've been on Facebook a lot lately I kind of like toggle back and forth between like Instagram and Facebook I haven't really been posting a lot on Instagram I did start a TikTok I have like three videos up there right now um, just kind of like fun, funny, but also like spiritual guidance type of advice. Um, so I'll just like link everything down below. Like I literally don't have any followers on TikTok. It's fine. But you know, if you want to go follow me, go follow me. Like, and when I feel inspired to post another video, I'll post another video. Um, I also have a Twitter. I started the Twitter specifically for like crypto shit so I can like follow and, um, so I can follow and just kind of like keep up with stuff that's happening in the crypto space and the NFT space. Uh, so if you want to follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. <clears throat> um, February is going to be, I feel like February is going to be really busy. I feel like February is going to be really busy. I still have to film my South Node, North Node video. Um, South Node and Scorpio, North Node and Taurus. i well aware I will do that this month. I'm going to do that this month. I'm going to do it this month. And then I also have another video coming up aside from these collective readings. Um, Aquarius through the houses. Okay. And anybody can watch it. You don't have to be an Aquarius to watch it. You just have to, you just have to know where Aquarius is in your chart. Cause, um, our charts have all the zodiac signs. Okay. So you might not even have any planets in Aquarius, but your Aquarius is located somewhere in your chart. And that, and that somewhere represents an area of your life. So Aquarius is affecting you in some way. Oh my God. So you do have to know where Aquarius is, but anybody can watch, anybody can watch it. Okay. You don't have to be an Aquarius to watch it, but we are in Aquarius season. So that is why I'm doing Aquarius through the houses, okay? All right, so let's get into this collective reading, you guys. Oh my God. I love it when I get to, like, you know, in 2020, I was playing with my tarot cards every single day, every single day, playing with my tarot cards, writing in my journal, playing with my tarot cards, writing in my journal. And, you know, like, it's just a different, there's just different things going on right now. So, like, literally the only time I play with my, I, like, you know, pick up my tarot cards is when I do these collective readings. So it just kind of like, it feels kind of cool, you know, because I'm not, you know, because when you start doing things too much, at least for me, I don't know how it is with other people. I'm a fire sign. So when I, when I do something for an extended period of time, every single day, it's like, whoa, we need to take a break from this. We need to start expanding our horizon, start doing something else, you know? And then I like, and then I appreciate it more. I love it more. I enjoy it more when I have like different things that I can enjoy and get myself involved in. Um, then when I like, you know, kind of go around from astrology to tarot to crypto to this to that to politics, like it just feels good in my life. You know, it just feels better. It feels more balanced somehow, right? Um, 
actually I've kind of been slacking on this, but I have been wanting to plant some seeds lately. I mean, I live in Chicago. I live in an apartment, but, um, yeah, I've been thinking like I need to, I need to go to this, um, gardening shop, um, and grab some seeds and like just have, have something going before springtime. It's just very therapeutic. When I started getting into, um, when I started getting into, uh, you know, like, uh, plants and stuff, it was just so therapeutic for me to, like, plant seeds and watch them grow. It was just, like, therapy. Okay. I'm gonna start, stop babbling. All right, what do we got going on for the collective? I'm using the Tarot of Dreams tarot deck. What do we got going on for the collective? All right, let's see here. King of Wands. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, okay, so this is Leo energy right over here. Okay, the King of Wands is one passionate MF. Okay, he is like, he is ready to take charge. He is a leader. He is ready to just like go out there and put his, his ideas, his passions into action action. Um, this is a very, very charismatic, passionate, like, you know, fiery, just, um, you know, go getter. And like, this is like, like lately I've been thinking a lot about Leo energy and like how, like, I just love Leos as parents. Um, I don't know, you know, and Leo rules the fifth house and the fifth house is the house of children. It's about having fun and it's about just like really shining um, you know, like, you know, like really like allowing your, like encouraging your children to be creative and allowing your children to shine. My allergies are just kind of sneaking up on me. So I'm going to be gross for a minute and just kind of wipe my nose. Oh my God. It was probably from the incense that I was burning. I probably should clean my house too. I should probably do some vacuuming because I have carpeting and fucking, you know, carpeting collects a lot of dust. But, um, yeah, so like, you know, for some of you, like you could have children, you know, you could be, you, you know, you're, you're definitely, you know, you're taking, you're, you're not just taking care of yourself, but you're taking care of other people too, okay? There, there's people who are dependent on you, you know, and, you know, you really got to have like a lot of, and when you have kids, and especially if you're a single parent, you really got to have a lot of energy, you know, not just to, you know, work for your family and work for your children, but to like, to love your children, to play with your children, to, you know, encourage their growth and encourage their light to shine, okay? I'm going to go ahead and clarify also though, just to kind of get a little bit deeper into the story, but we're going to continue on so let's see what else we got going on here the tree of life so this tarot of dreams deck has some extra cards it has five extra cards um it has like the palace like like the palace of cups and the palace of pentacles like stuff like that and then it has the tree of life now the book really doesn't provide any kind of description about the tree of life but I feel this very much as like some kind of like family legacy type of thing I feel this very much as like um you know like really aligning, you know, really like allowing yourself to align all the different things that you have going on in your life right now. This is like, to me, this is a card of like, true, al like alignment, you know, and bringing like just bringing things in like bringing things into your core into your heart, um, everything that you have kind of going on around you. Um, all the different areas of your life, you know, money, um, your creativity, projects, working, uh, relationships, friendships, uh, family, and just kind of, just kind of like allowing yourself to be aligned with these different things. Now, you know, there could also be There could also be like something that you are trying to something very specific that you are trying to accomplish. And this is not this is not just like 
some small potatoes type of stuff. Like this is something big. There's something big that you're trying to accomplish and not just for yourself, but for like a lot of people around you. Like you could be on the verge of like, I don't know, like a starting a business or you could be on the verge of like creating something. <laughs> I literally thought of like the blockchain, <laughs> like looking at this, you could tell that I've been into the crypto stuff with the words that have been coming out lately. Um, I do think of the, I do kind of like, you know, I mean, the blockchain that looks a little bit like more like a grid, but um, yeah, like, I just feel like this is some something really big. So some really, really big stuff is going on um, in your life in regards to, you know, creating something not just for yourself, but like for your community, for the bigger picture, for, for a network of people. It's not just about you, but it's really just about being part of something. Okay, I, I see this as movement also. Um, this kind of energy, like this type of energy put together, it could be like starting a revolution, like no joke. Um, like this King of Wands energy, whew, you know, that is, that can definitely be some revolutionary energy right there. Um, you know, bringing people together, like bringing a collective of people together, like leading, leading a tribe type of thing. Okay, like I said, we will clarify. So for the Six of Coins, this is the Moon in Taurus. Um, this is about like, this is about giving, uh, this is about justice and it's about receiving and giving balance. But it's it's about like charity as well, okay? It's about charity. It's about helping other people. So if you're in a position of power, if you're in, it doesn't have to be like a position of power, but if you're in this position where you feel like you can help people, you can do this, you know, then this is something that you're thinking about doing or something you're already doing. So, um, you know, trying to like keep things, you know, the coins are balanced over here on these scales. So it's like, it's like holding on, it's like holding on to your money and hold, like holding on to your resources and giving it out where, where you think it, um, where you see fit, where you think it is going to be most utilized and most, you know, um, I kind of see this a lot as like, this is also very much like investor energy, you know, you're, you know, you're keeping things kind of balanced and maybe like you're, you're starting to like invest in, in, in people and in projects. Um, so just kind of like, you know, and, uh, you know, being considerate to the fact that, uh, being considerate to what is just, being considerate to what is good, you know, what is, what will produce value, what will, um, like things like that, you know, what will produce value for the future. So that is very much what I am seeing right there. Uh, we have the Ten of Cups. Oof, damn, these cards are just like coming out. Like, these are some beautiful. Guys, these are some beautiful cards. The Ten of Cups, this is like bliss. This is ecstasy. This is euphoria. <laughs> um, Mars in um, Mars in Pisces. Okay, this is like, the, like we see over here the happy family. It's glowing. This looks very like the ideal Christian family, right? But no, it doesn't have to be like Christian. I'm just, I'm just saying that, okay? Just like spiritual, just very... You know, Pisces is very spiritual energy and Mars is just very passionate, you know, like, um, like you would do anything to protect this dream. Um, now if, if you're somebody who, are, you know, already has a family, um, you know, you already kind of have that family that you're protecting, but that you're protecting, you have your, you have your emotional fulfillment, you have your, um, you have the loved ones around you, you know, you're, you're feeling that vibe, you're feeling that energy of just like happiness and bliss. It's really just going to be about fighting to keep it, fighting to keep that energy, um, you know, and just like being passionate about protecting it. Okay. Um, for others of you, you could be very passionate about obtaining that energy, right. And, you know, kind of going after that emotional fulfillment, that dream of just like pure bliss and happiness and joy and being around the people you want to be around, whether it's like a husband, a wife, having children or just like close friends. It could be a community of people, you know, it's just whatever makes you feel complete and utter happiness and joy. Okay, for the next we have the Eight of Coins. This is going to be the Sun in Virgo. This is one of my all-time favorite cards because it really shines a light 
on like the beauty of craftsmanship. It really shines a light on like how beautiful things, the things that we create and the things that we put our hard work into can come out when we really spend time on the details, when we really focus in and um, really enjoy what we're doing. I mean, you, you really have to be a good craftsman and to be somebody who um, you know, who's really, really good at what they do, then you really need to be able to be with those every, you really need to be there every day and be present with those details and to, um, and, and to want to make it better, to want to perfect it. You know, Virgo energy does tend to maybe get a little bit too self-critical or maybe become a little bit too much of a perfectionist. So it's, it's not a bad thing to be a perfectionist. It's not bad to like really want to make things like a certain way. But if it gets to a point to where you're not enjoying yourself anymore, that's when you know it's time to stop. And that's when you, that's when it's time to be like, you know what, this is, this is good. This is good enough. <laughs> This is, this is just good how it is. And if you know what, let's get this, let's put this out there. And if we run into any problems, we'll, we'll go through some critical thinking, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay. Um, but this is a beautiful energy. I, the sun in Virgo is such beautiful energy because it really just shows, it really just shines a light on like, the, like the craftsmanship of things, you know, the, the detail that people put into, you know, just like this card alone, you know, just, you know, just the details and the love that, that you put into your work, okay, and whatever it is that you're creating and doing, okay. Um, so next we have the Four of Wands, um, another really great card. This is Venus in Aries, okay. Um, so this is like things are coming together, you know, um, especially if you are in some kind of partnership or if you're working with other people and you guys are like each working on things individually and then you're kind of like bringing it together in some way in order to create like this other thing. So this, I mean, this energy can go so many different ways, but just kind of considering what we got going on here right now. Um, cause the Venus, Venus and Aries typically will like, it can represent, you know, marriage. It can represent like two people coming together, but it doesn't have to be just about two people. These are four pillars. This is the number four. So this can definitely be more about like celebrating, um, celebrating the energy of your, of your like, uh, coworkers or peers or just, um, the creative love that you are putting into some kind of project and then watching it. And then bringing them together to watch it become this bigger thing, okay? So that could be something that you're uh, you got going on right now. Um, for others, it could be something related to part. You know, you could be moving into, you could be taking your relationship to the next level, like buying a house together. Um, so it, this can also literally represent like a new house, like you see like the four pillars and then the big door. Uh, like maybe you just got married and you know you're you're moving into a house with someone. Uh, or you're, you just found a house, you know, or, you know, some, some sale, uh, some buy just went through. But yeah. All right. Uh, we have the Ace of Swords next. Um, another very beautiful kind of pure kind of energy. Um, Ace of Swords is going to represent the element of air. Uh, so that's Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Air energy is all mental. It's very, it's very, very much mental. It's very intellectual. It's very like, you know, thinking, you know, like, you know, always trying to obtain clarity, always trying to kind of like shuffle through the, the Ace of the Ace of Swords is about obtaining clarity. Okay. Um, it's about being able to kind of like shuffle through all the like nuances in order to arrive to just kind of like this clear, a clear idea and picture and it just kind of like clicks and you're like, ah, right. Um, so the Ace of Swords is, is very much about clarity and it's, it's about kind of like a new beginning, but whenever, sometimes I really don't like using like the new, that term, um, a new beginning. A lot of tarot readers will use a new beginning. And like, I think for people, it's like, what do you mean? Like a new beginning? I've been involved in this for a while. It's, you know, <laughs> when you're, when you're like very much uh, deep into like the spiritual world, I guess, like you, you pay attention. Um, you notice and pay attention very much to 
um, the process of like endings and beginnings and, um, and just like the way that things are always dying and then coming back to life. So a new beginning can literally happen. Like a new beginning is like you wake up one day and it's a new day. Okay. A new beginning could be like, well, you tried some other idea with the, with a bunch of people and it didn't work. So now you're going to try something new, right? Uh, that, that is what we're talking about here. For others, it can be so much more dramatic. It could literally be like this whole phase of your life is coming to an end and you're about to step into a new phase. I don't really, I, I don't really think of that as the Ace of Swords. I don't, the Ace of Swords is not that dramatic. Um, the Ace of Swords is really just like you have a new idea, right? You have some new idea that you want to implement, that you want to try out, you know, the, just kind of like this moment of, ah, you know, like, huh, I wonder about this. Okay, and then for the final card, before we start clarifying, we have the Emperor. Jesus Christ. A lot of powerful cards coming out. This is more Aries energy over here. Woo, the motherfucking Emperor. <laughs> ready to take over the world okay someone's ready to take over the world over here um yeah this is some big boss energy over here so you know that's either you or that's someone in your environment or um you know just kind of get, getting ready to do this shit yeah like I mean we started with the King of Wands, Leo, and we ended with the Emperor, Aries. Like, this is some hella fire energy going on over here. This is some, like, creative shit. This is some creative shit. Um, this is, like, paving paving a new path. You know, we're, we're, we're getting our dreams in order. We're getting our life in order. We're getting everything in fucking order, okay? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> what's that saying? Leave no prisoners? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the saying is, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what that is. That, that's like no bullshit. We're, you know, we're, we're building this fucking thing. We're building this empire. We're doing it. It's, we started it. We're on the train. We're going and fuck it. We're going to see what's going to happen as time goes. Right. All right. So let's, um, let's go ahead and just kind of like clarify a little bit over here. See if we can get some deeper insights. Okay, so starting with the King of Wands. Um, okay. Okay, so um, so there was definitely like when um, you know, there was some struggle when this kind of first uh when this first took off. Uh, so for those of you who definitely kind of started uh, to become a creative or spiritual leader um, in some way, you know, like you just kind of like took a leap, you kind of took a leap of faith and you just kind of started it and went for it. Now, with the Seven of Swords um, and the Ten of Wands over here, um, there is an energy kind of tied up to perhaps like... Um, there could have been some, you know, there, there might've been some kind of reckless behavior in the beginning. Um, I mean, the seven of swords can be related to like theft, um, but it can also be related to like trying to be sneaky about something. Okay. Trying to be sneaky about something, maybe like, uh, trying to do things in a way that, ultimately just made you feel try try like maybe like not going about it in the most honest way and then ultimately it ended up making you feel overburdened right because like because now because it because when you do things um oh king of pentacles on the bottom when you do things that when you do things from a cowardly place that's the best way to put it to me the seven of swords is like cowardly energy um some it also it also deals with like escaping situate like it also deals with um you know like maybe like stealing from the enemy and trying to run away now 
even if that was the situation where you feel like this, these people deserved it, that still, and like, like, even if you like got away, even if you got away with it, that still cr can create a lot of burdensome type of things that you have to deal with because it's like, because the, the weight that you kind of just placed on your own shoulders, um, is like you're always going to be thinking like oh are they you know you're 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 always going to be thinking like how how can how is this going to come bite me in the ass basically and it's possible that it did bite you in the ass okay so for some of you who were definitely trying to like lead something like to me this is like I feel this very much as like some energy of like someone who like had who has some kind of vision or idea um, and they took some bigger, a bigger vision. Um, I see this very much as a person um, who has some bigger visions, bigger dreams, bigger ideas, you know, and deciding to take action and maybe like stealing, you know, money in order to make this dream come true or something like that. But now there's just like a lot of burden over here because now you put so much more on your plate that you have to think about, that you have to think about, you know, because Saturn and Sagittarius, that is not a happy Sagittarius. That is a Sagittarius that is being held down by the powers that be. So just kind of be careful with that. Uh, the tree of life, uh, the tree of life is going to be clarified by the page of wands, uh, the four of pentacles and the nine of cups. So we have earth energy over here. Um, we have more earth energy, Capricorn, and we have the nine of cups. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is going to be really about like taking, you know, taking that first step, you know, to, to accomplish these bigger dreams and these bigger goals that you're moving towards. Um, it's really going to be about like, um, you know, beginning, beginning that, beginning that creative journey and, and actually doing things, you know, you know, I definitely see someone who, um, who is saving up their money, you know, being very, very careful, being very careful about their money, being very careful about, um, how they're going to go about this, you know, just trying to be really careful and really smart about it. Um, while exploring different ways to implement this this creative strategy, um, and eyes on the prize over here with the nine of cups, um, this is like wish fulfillment type of stuff. This is like you know, it's almost like this deeper knowing, like this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. Like my my dreams are gonna come true. Um, the six of coins is clarified by the magician. Ooh, Mercury energy, the Hierophant, Taurus energy, and I love these cards. This is um, Anima Mundi. I always forget Anima Mundi. And then the Six of Wands, we have uh, Victory. We have Jupiter and Leo. Um, so, you know, possibly figuring out um, how to how to invest. Possibly figuring out how to invest this money um, in others and kind and being being a leader like big time big time being a leader and figuring out what you really want to do with this money, figuring out how you want to invest this money to who you want to invest it to. Um, like this is some, yeah, this is some, this is some really, really strong manifestation kind of energy that's going on here. Okay. Um, oh my God, I have to flip these upside down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Clarifying the 10 of cups. We have the empress, the temperance and the two of pentacles. So here's the empress. Uh, temperance over here and then we have the two of pentacles uh, so we have Venus energy we have Sagittarius energy and we have Jupiter in Capricorn um, okay so the ten of cups um, yeah like you so you could be in a partnership with someone else in this or you are looking for you you're looking for your you're looking for your partner you're looking for your your balance your empress like you like deep down inside like you do want to have that that um feminine masculine kind of balance in your life um or just like your other half type of thing um and like i think deep down inside like you want to work together you want to work together on this with another person 
Okay, you want to work together on this like this whole thing with another person. Let's clarify the seven of coins. Um, or the eight of coins, I apologize, the sun in Virgo. We have the queen of swords, queen of swords, Libra energy. These cards are so cool. Owl, page of pentacles. We have, um, earth energy over here, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And we have the king of swords. We have the queen of swords and we have the king of swords over here. Oh shit. That's Aquarius right there. Okay. So for that eight of coins, yeah, like, Ooh, this is like some, this is like some strategizing, you know, like working, working on this thing, like really getting into the details of this project or this thing that you're working on, but also like keeping your eyes peeled. Okay. Like with the queen of swords and the king of swords over here, you could be in uh, this, you could be in a partnership with somebody else. Um, it doesn't have to be like a love partnership. It could be just like you're in a business partnership with somebody else, but you're in some kind of partnership of some kind or like you're, and if, but if you're alone, like you're, you're, you are like so aware, like literally while you are working on this, while you are in the detail of your work and what you're doing, like you never forget about this, your strategy. You never forget about the fact that like there could be like enemies lurking or there's like other shit going on that you need to focus on. Like these birds see everything. They see everything, right? Like they, 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 they're always looking around them. They're always... You know, their strategy is very much, um, it has to be in alignment, right? It has to be kind of like, it has to be aware. It has to know what's going on. Um, because, you know, if anybody comes and tries to mess with you or your project, it's like you're cutting them out, right? That sword energy is very much about being cut the fuck out if you come around, if you start coming around and trying to like, you know, fuck with me. So, Got to get rid of these people. Four of Wands um, is clarified by the Five of Swords, Venus and Aquarius. Uh, another Ten of Cups, Mars and Pisces. And another Eight of Pentacles, okay, uh, the Sun in Virgo. Okay, so overall, with this kind of collective energy, like there definitely could have been, you know... Um, as far as what the other people are working on, so I, the way I'm picking up on this energy right now is really interesting. It's, it's a little competitive. It's like, you're all going towards the same place. Okay. Remember guys, this is collective. This is the, this is collective energy. So even if you're working on things alone, you're never truly alone, right? Um, so the way that I'm seeing this is like, we're all going towards the same place. We're, we're all going towards the same dreams or whatever, but you have the four pillars over here. And, um, you know, maybe you're like competing, you know, uh, with other people of like, who's going to get there first, or it's like, you're competing to like finish this project, like maybe before another person does. Uh, or maybe that was your attitude in the past, but it's like, if you're all going towards the same place, if you're all going for this happiness and this bliss and this joy, it's like, what the fuck does it matter? Just get back to your, get back to your eight of pentacle energy, which is just like focusing on the craft at hand. However, when there are so many different projects and so many different people working on different things, but they're, all those things are kind of going towards a certain vision, right? Um, then there's always going to be a little bit of, a little bit of this, this, uh, five of swords. This is this, this Venus and Aquarius. There's always going to be a lot of like, cause people, you know, they're, they're fighting for what they want, but you know, you don't realize, you know, that by you fighting for what you want, you could be also destroying, like, you know, like be careful how you play the game, you know, because if you're destroying somebody else's dreams in the process, it's like, it's, is that even necessary? I don't know, you know, because sometimes when you want, like, to me, this is very egotistical energy. This is very much about like someone who loves themselves more than they love, like the actual vision, right? And this vision, this Venus and Aries, this vision, you know, uh, like wants to allow that more of that creative energy to come through. Um, so 
I don't know, like, it just looks like there's some game, there's some games being played here, you know, it, maybe it's not coming from, like, a bad place, like, it, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing, but, like, there's some games being played over here, and, and I feel like it could be, like, competitive, you know, like, people are kind of trying to, like, one-up each other, um, so, yeah, Ace of Swords, let's clarify that, we have the Queen of Cups, Cancer, now we're underwater over here, uh, we have the Two of Swords, Moon in Libra, and we have the Two of Wands, more Aries energy. This is the Mar. Uh, this is Mars and Aries. Okay, okay. So this this new idea, this new idea, this new vision, this 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 new idea is being guided by some some deep love. I don't know, some deep love trying to make a decision over here, trying to make a decision over here about this idea, like which way you want to go. We have the Two of Swords and we have the Two of Wands. So. I think what you're what we're doing over here is you're tuning into your deeper intuition. That's what needs to happen over here. You need to tune into your deeper, deeper intuition and really kind of take a look at like uh, intuitively speaking, intuitively how you really feel on a deeper, more intuitive and instinctual level about this idea, because that is going to help guide you in, in the direction that you need to go. Maybe you're not sure where you want to implement this idea. Maybe you have this idea, but you're not exactly sure. Do I go here? Do I go there? Do I go to this platform or that platform? Um, yeah. So that's what that is. Okay, now let's clarify the Emperor, and we're going to wrap this up with a Mausoleo card. We have the Five of Pentacles, interesting, Mercury and Taurus, the Ace of Cups, and the High Priestess. Wow. Five of Pentacles energy is like loss of money or it deals with some self, it deals with some doubt, you know, some self doubt or feeling like you don't have help, you know, feeling like you don't know where to go for help. Um, Ace of Cups, we have like some new beginning and like love. Um, this is Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and then the High Priestess, the moon. Um... This emperor energy is very much being guided by, it's like saying, don't forget. It's coming like, I feel this very much as like someone who has the energy of an emperor. They have the energy of power and emperor in them, but they came from poverty. You might have come from poverty. If you if you came from poverty and you have that emperor energy, like that's, that's love. Like the, the way that you're able to give that emperor energy is through love because you know what it means to struggle. So don't forget that. That is a really important message with the high priestess here. Like, don't forget your heart. Don't forget where you came from. That's that's your message, especially with the high priest. Don't forget about where you come from, because uh, it's gonna it's gonna be so important to your happiness and to your success. And your spirit guides are gonna guide you. This is the last card, the high priestess. Like your intuition, and it's gonna guide you, and your heart is gonna guide you, and um the people who really care about you and who really love you are going to guide you. That is that message intuitively. Okay. These are like spirit guides. Okay. Like, and they can, you know, they can come in many shapes and sizes and forms, but, um, you know, and these, uh, these spirit guides and intuitive, intuitive, um, high priestesses, <laughs> um, they're going to keep you on track. Okay. They're going to keep you on track. So, and they're going to deliver messages to you as time goes on. All right. Okay. So that's pretty much the reading for this. We're just going to pull one Oracle card from the Mausoleo Oracle of Souls. I was feeling very drawn to this deck, um, to see what the, messages to 
for you to take away with you into this Monday. We have Abraham, justice of pandemonium, justice, truth, and duty. Wow. Okay, I'm going to read it from the book. Because this book has it. It has the, oh wow, it's the very first one. Abraham, the justice. Very, very first one. Okay. Okay. The Republic of Pandemonium, the city of Pandemonium and its surrounding lands belong not to the gods, but to the archons of human achievement. These icons bound themselves in life, not to gods or faiths, but to human ideals, becoming idols and objects of veneration in their own way. To dwell in Pandemonium is to still be bound by the temporal goals and abilities of a human life, whether the glory of success or the haunting specter of failure. Abraham the Justice, he is the justice of pandemonium, known for his wisdom and his dedication to justice and truth in both life and death, the once mortal Abraham is the judge of pandemonium. He can see the, he can see though any falsity or subterfuge and determine the worthiness or unworthiness of those who come before his court. Although he arrived in the afterlife ragged, broken, and stripped of himself, that which was most real in himself persevered. His moral integrity, his dedication to justice and duty, his personal honor. Abraham shows us the truth of our temporal selves. What in us is worth keeping, balanced against what is unworthy of our future selves and best abandoned in the waste. Okay, so this could very much be the guiding factor. I mean, you know, we had this, uh, we had this um, justice right over here come up in the six of coins over here. Um, so this could very much be about doing what is right or, you know, being, being guided by, but, but not just like, it's not really just about providing, it's not just about others. It's about providing justice for yourself, right? Um, it's about your own sense of justice. It's about your own feelings of like equality and um and truth and duty and like what you know is right inside okay so that is what i'm getting with that okay guys so this is the collective reading from monday february 6th february 7th oh my god i did this in my last video too i like fuck up the dates uh, monday february 7th 2022 so i really hope you enjoyed this collective reading and i'll see you guys next time bye